Hello and welcome to another tutorial video here from Zanata Consulting. My name is Tyler Colt, and in this video, we're going to be going over customizing your templates inside of Zoho Books. So we are going to cover both types of templates, one being like the PDF templates for an estimate, a sales order, or an invoice. We'll also be covering the email templates as well. I'll show you both where to find those and how to make changes to them. So before I jump in, I do want to ask if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below as that really does help us out. And if it sparks any questions, feedback, or additional video requests, leave those in the comments section. We try to read through all of those on a weekly basis. Uh, so without any further ado, let us jump right on into the walkthrough. So here I am inside of Zoho Books. I've gone into the settings up here in the top right. And really what we're going to be looking at today are two different types of templates. Those are going to live here under the PDF templates when we're talking about the actual document for a given transactional record, whether that's on the purchasing side, like an invoice or like a purchase order or the sales side, like a sales order or invoice. We'll also take a look in the second part of the video on the email notifications. I just think those are a little more self-explanatory. So I want to make sure that we get through the PDF templates first. So let's go ahead and open one of these up. We're going to be looking at just the invoices template here for today, but you do have the ability to set your templates for really all of the different types of records that are here inside of Zoho Books. And this will also apply if you're working within Zoho Inventory. Here I am inside of an invoice template. I can make two different choices. I could either edit the standard template or I can create a new one. In our case, I'm going to create a new one because I want to show you later how to pick which one you want to use when you're actually creating and sending an invoice. So I'll create a new one here. It's going to allow us to start this from an existing template. I always recommend that you do. So I'm going to start just with the standard template and we'll make some adjustments to that. So let's use this template now. So what we'll see here is that pretty familiar looking invoice template where over here on the left hand side is really where we get into a lot of the things that we can customize. Um, so I'm going to go through each of these categories just to give you a high level of what they do. And then we'll go into a few of them and show you how to make some common adjustments in here up in the top left. This is like your general settings. Most important thing here is to give this a good name. So oftentimes these are like, hey, the standard template with no billing address, the standard template without a PO number or with a PO number, right? Whatever those different like adjustments that you might need to make to this are, just make sure that you've included that in the naming convention itself. We can go down and set the paper size as well. This is just like the default aspect ratio of the PDF, as well as the orientation if you wanted to do it landscape. I don't know a lot of times where people do, um, but if you did, you can do that here. We can also set our margins to find which fonts we want to have, as well as set an actual background image if we'd like to on the invoice. We can also set the background color as well. So if we wanted to go crazy and make the background you know, red or something else, um, we can do that, though I don't really expect that a lot of people would um, because it looks a little funky. So I'm going to turn this back to white and move on to the next set of settings. Um, one thing that uh, astute viewers may have noticed there is that you do need to click this refresh preview up in the top right as you're making any changes, uh, just so you can see exactly what they're really going to look like. Next will be like our header and footer information. So this is a case where if we want to customize some of that header content, we'll do that here under customize. So if we were to click that and then type in some example header content, and then maybe we'd want to merge something in like the name of our organization, I can go ahead and add that. And we'll see that up here in the top, it's now added both the thing that I typed in manually, as well as the dynamically merged in value. I always like to highlight as I'm going through that this header is not like this. It's above it, right? It's the more traditional header that you'd see on a document. Same thing here with the footer. This is not the notes. This is not the terms and conditions. This is specifically the footer content, which if we do a preview, will show all the way down here at the bottom. Now, by default, this is going to be a little small and a little bit gray. Of course, you can make these changes to that if you'd like to change the text formatting itself. Next, we get into a bit more of like the meat and potatoes here of the invoice template where we'll be looking at the actual transaction details. So this is one of those cases where if we want to change anything at the top here, we can do so. 
So if I were to click into the organization address format, we can see it's just got city, state, postal code, and country. I can configure this to be a little bit more detailed. So if I wanted to put like the street address in, I can do that and it'll pop in. I think in our demo account, we've just got a limited bit of address information. Customer details also going to be important. So this is basically where you'll select if you want to include or exclude like the customer information as a whole. I do recommend that you always keep this bill to information. Sometimes the ship to information, if I turn that on, can be a little bit unnecessary if it's the same. But if you are in an industry where a lot of the times you're billing to, you know, address A, but maybe you're shipping somewhere else, you may want to include that ship to address. So in our case, I'm going to actually include that here just for the purposes of the demo. And then I'll come back to here and I'll say, you know, includes shipping address. Again, I just always like to recommend you keep those template names really accurate and informative so that people know exactly what they're getting into when they're going to use a particular template. Last section here under the transaction details is really talking about the rest of the document that's going to be above the table here. This is really referring to this section, right? The invoice date, the terms, the due date, right? And we can set any of the things that we want to include right here on the page. So we'll see over here on the side, all of these values that have been activated are the exact things that show up over here on the right. So by including, for example, reference field, if I were to turn that off, and give it a refresh, we now don't have that PO number field. If I turn it back on, we now do. Now you might notice that it's not calling it the reference field, it's calling it PO number. That's because I've typed it over here. So maybe if I wanted to type it like PO number spelled out and give it a refresh, it's now been updated on our template as well. So just important to go through and make sure that you're including any relevant information. The purchase order number is a really popular one because a lot of people like to see that on an invoice when you're sending it to them for payment. Um, so again, just a quick little tutorial here on that top section. Next, getting into the table of data. This, as you'd expect, is really referring to like the line items that are involved in this particular invoice. Here's where we'll be able to choose two different things. One would be what content is going to appear within this table. And two would be some of the formatting options around the table. So in the labels section, a couple important ones that I always like to highlight is here under this customize item name and description. If you did want to add any other content to this section, like let's say I just want to add item skew, that will then show up here within our template. So you're able to customize those item names and descriptions pretty easily within here. Down below as well, we don't have serial numbers included in this demo account. Oh no, maybe we do, look at that. So now we've got some serial numbers associated as well that will come in basically just showing, hey, if this is a serialized item, this is how those serial numbers are gonna show up. These are just demo serials because ours are not enabled. So we'll go ahead and get rid of those and give it a quick refresh. Down below, we are able to include additional information from the item data itself. So if you wanted to include like the brand, we can check that box and now that'll be added as a column. So each of these things here below are going to be columns that are added. So just be intentional here as to not do too many, right? Like if I were to select like a whole bunch of columns and try to add all of those, things start getting really messy. So just be a little bit selective. Make sure you're not including information that isn't necessary on the invoice just to keep things clean and easy to understand for the viewer. Now up above under the layout, this is really just where you're getting into like the fonts, the colors, right? Each of those additional criteria. So like maybe we look at the table headers and we go, eh, these are a little too small. Let's make that font size 12, give it a refresh. And there it is nice and big. I now think that's a little too big, but we'll leave it for now. Font size on the item row itself, of course, is going to be for the things that are inside of each row. And then the item description font, we do want to keep this one small. This is talking about like this information here. So we're going to leave that as an eight, but you can make that bigger or smaller based on your particular requirements. Lastly, under the total section, again, we've got those two different sub tabs between layouts and labels. Labels, of course, are just the things that we're going to actually show in this section. So if I were to get rid of any of these, like, uh, you know, get rid of the subtotal, give it a refresh. Now that's not here, right? In general, I do think you probably want the subtotal more than you don't. So we're gonna keep that in the loop here. And then over on the right, 
Of course, we can choose the font information, the size, the color, etc. One thing I will highlight when it comes to the labels is that um, we get asked this a lot is how do I make sure that I'm showing some of the information about the payments so far? All of those are just going to come as this show payment details. So right now we can see this payment has been made of $100. If I were to turn off that payment details, that's no longer here. Again, I do generally recommend that you keep this on, especially if you do any partial payments, just because if somebody has already paid that $100, you want them to know about it. Otherwise, they're going to ask you like, hey, my subtotal is 630. The balance due is 562. What's going on? Right. So you just want to include that information by default and make sure that they're well aware of any payments that have been made. Lastly, under the other details section is where we get into everything that is down here at the bottom of the page. This is another opportunity where you can add some information about like your bank if you want to allow some ACH directly. So I could say like put your ACH information here. And then if we do a preview, we can see that that will all come in right here underneath the other payment options, which in our case might be credit card and PayPal. We can also include any of the terms and conditions at the bottom. And if we would like to include a signature here, we surely can, but generally not going to be needed for an invoice, right? Like you might want a signature on an estimate or a contract, not as necessary here at the bottom. Now you might be noticing that we're not able to actually change the terms and conditions from right here. So I'll show you how to do that uh, once we're done with our invoice. Now that we look at this, let's say we think everything looks pretty good. Last thing we may want to adjust would be like any of the colors and themes up here under the sneaky little drop down in the top right. This may want to be like this blue gray color. I kind of like that. So I will click save and then we'll jump into actually showing where we would go about updating those terms and conditions. And so with our template locked in, let's go ahead and take a look at how to change the terms and conditions. So here under sales and under invoices, we can actually set those terms and conditions however we'd like that we want to appear on invoice records. Um, it does break this down per module. So estimates can have a different terms and conditions than the invoices can. The reason for that is in a lot of cases, you do actually want to have different terms and conditions if someone's just going to accept an estimate versus pay an invoice. Right, So we can actually branch those out between each of the modules and use them as we need them. So with the PDF template kind of locked in, let's take a look at adjusting the email notifications as well. So let's go into the settings and into email notifications. We can create one from scratch up here in the top right. I normally like to clone things uh, as a general rule of thumb, starting with something is a little easier than starting with nothing. So we'll go ahead and click clone. This is probably looking like a pretty familiar template here if you've used Zoho Books before. So up at the top, we'll give it a title. We'll call this maybe like the brand colors template. And what we can do here is either add, remove information, as well as change the colors that appear on the email template. So let's say maybe I want to add like the customer's first name here into the template, like thank you for your business, John, or whatever it may be. I can come in here, go into my insert placeholders and click on first name, which has then added this directly to the template. We can see it did like a next line there. So always just be careful as you're doing this. Make sure to clean up as you go. Another one that we get asked all the time about is how to change the color of this top bar, right? Uh, it comes out as this blue. It's not really obvious how to change it. So what I normally do is I come into the HTML settings, which is this little tab here. And this is where you'll want to just kind of copy exactly where I did this uh, when you do this in your own account. But you want to change the hex code right here behind this text align. Now I'm just going to set mine to 123123 and click Save. Now when I open this template back up, we can see that this little gr uh, thing that used to be blue is now green. If you'll believe me, when I was playing around with this before the video, I randomly picked 123123, and it's actually pretty close to our brand color. So I don't know if that was just uh, totally random or what, um, but we can change those colors here. I recommend keeping this pay now link. We're not going to go too far down the rabbit hole here of adjusting this section. But just keep in mind that you can really do anything that you can normally do in an email editor right here inside of this template. Now, in this case, I'm going to actually set this to default using this option down here in the bottom left and click save. And that is all for the email templates. So last but not least, let's actually go into the system here, 
open up an invoice and see how we would associate the templates that we want to use on the invoice itself. Here inside of an invoice, uh, we've got it set obviously to the default template, so not the one that we just created. To change that, down here in the bottom right, we've got this template, standard template selected. So I'll just click change, and then I can choose this new template. And just like that, it's now been applied and we're looking good. This can also be set via API. If you're creating invoices via code, you can associate the template uh, when you do that. Now here, to actually send out the email, we'll click on that send email button. We will see that this pulls in automatically for us. Looks like in our case, the first name was not stored for that client, so it gave us a little warning. So we can just go ahead and clean that up. If I ever did want to use my other email template, I can do so just by selecting from the template editor right here in the top right. Then all I need to do is send this thing out and the customer will be able to pay it. And when they receive it, it'll show as the selected PDF templates and that they could download, pay uh, digitally or whatever their preference may be. That's going to cover it here today for a template overview inside of Zoho Books. I uh, really do hope that this video was useful for you. It's one that we get questions on pretty darn often. If it was useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. This really does help us out. Make sure that you'll see videos like this one in the future. Make sure as well, if it sparked any feedback, questions, or additional video requests, to leave those in the comment section below as we do try to read through each and every one of those on a weekly basis. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.